Welcome, Welcome to the Reality, to the Reality Revolution, Revolution podcast. podcast. Coming, Coming to you from, you from the void. void. This is your I'm host, your host, Brian, Brian Scott. Scott. This podcast, this podcast is, is dedicated, dedicated to the spirit to, the spirit life to live life. life. It's magical and fun. It's meant to be magical. It contains advanced it's viewpoints fun. for the multidimensional human beings of the 21st century. It contains advanced viewpoints. Here we venture to share the mysteries of self human and beings of the 21st century. Our primary century. purpose is Here to reawaken your sense Here we venture to share the mysteries of self life. and reality. To shatter your My primary purpose is to reawaken seeing your sense of fascination and awe towards life. To shatter your rigid belief systems that are limiting the ways you see the world. And open Limited possibilities My goal is to help you hack relationships reality, in your life, to unleash your true to potential, to spark the mysteries that of divine the power within you, to open unlimited possibilities of wealth, coming health, into a quantum and relationships event. in your We're life. Slowly to explore the, the mysteries of the universe, of our minds. we are experiencing a quantum as we shift it. in the world. We are awakening to a new reality revolution. Today's episode, we're going to talk about lifestyle design. Hopefully you got a chance to listen to the last episode, which was on purpose. And I wanted to kind of include this in the last podcast, but it's really kind of in and of itself. In fact, several times I've wanted to do an episode about this and I will be creating an entire podcast, which in many ways, this doesn't entirely fit with what we've been talking about on the podcast, but to me, it really does. And let me give you some background behind that. Many times when I have been asked to coach and one of the things that comes up is the idea that somebody has not found their purpose or their meaning or what they want to truly do with their life. I have found the ultimate solution, the greatest solution in 95% of the cases is to find some additional income or some way of working at home, some way of firing your boss some way of working from your home on a laptop and that kind of thing, finding a business. And there's so many different ways to do this. And I'm not saying that for everybody. Everybody has their own dreams and desires and things to do. But if you can find a way to become self-employed, it is one of the most empowering and wonderful things. And it goes a lot of ways in creating your, your reality. It's a part of it there. It does not distinguish from it. So, what I'm saying is if you have the ability to create your own reality down to the very core of it in every way, shape and form, everything you can imagine, you're not just manifesting one thing. You're not manifesting that car or that house because once you get those things, then you've already got it. What we're on is a journey and you want to live a joyous and blissful life every day, every second, every hour to design your life. Imagine what your perfect life would be. Why are you afraid to ask yourself that question? Don't limit yourself as to what would be possible. What would your perfect life be? Design it. What time do you want to wake up in the morning? What time do you want to go to bed? What do you want to be doing with the majority of your time? That's the question. Do you want to work a nine to five job for the next 40 years? So that when you can retire, when you're at a a less of a place than you were before, then, then you get to enjoy your money and retire. How about living in retirement now? How about finding passive income opportunities and taking advantage of a market for the internet that is truly incredible and easy to take a part of? People can work at home in hundreds of businesses and... I'm going to be exploring this on my podcast, which is the laptop revolution. Hopefully you'll be seeing that within the next month or so. But in terms of this podcast episode, we're talking about lifestyle design. And so it doesn't have to be um, an employment or an idea of what it is you want to do, but we really need to get to the core of what kind of life that you want to live. If I'm going to help you be successful and if you want to hack reality, then let's figure this out together. Let's figure out what would be the life that you want to live. And oftentimes people go through experiences and they adjust what they truly want. And I can only give you my own personal story. This is different than what I've told you before. This is my own personal story in business, which has helped me to understand that you can find meaning and purpose outside of your work, outside of your job. And part of the key is understanding 
of how that plays a role in your life. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. You know, 10 years ago, 2008, I had no idea what the future held. I was in the mortgage industry. And this is a crazy time in the mortgage industry. Before it crashed, it was an industry that had all kinds of crazy loans. We, we could do stated income loans for people with the, for a million dollar loan and they required no income or no assets. And there were just very deceptive and crazy loans at the time. Part of the reason that the industry kind of blew up on itself. That's a whole other podcast. But at the time I had been a mortgage broker for about 10 years and, and seemingly overnight everything had gone now this was not a job that i enjoyed we did loans that were not as good for people and in many ways it would carry on my own on my own soul and karma i felt that then i tried to change and find a, an area in the mortgage business where i was happy with the loans that i could do and so i tried to do purchases and help with the realtors and there were different things and I, and I got a lot out of it. i met some really incredible people but it did not speak to my heart and it's not something I really wanted to do, but I figured, Hey, it's a great way to make money and I can take care of my family that way. And you get stuck in a job, you get stuck in a, a line of work. And sometimes it starts working out for you and you look back and you wish you didn't take that job because now you're making good money at that job, but you don't really want that job because it, it doesn't give you what you're looking for, whatever it is. Now your purpose doesn't have to be related to your life. But I believe that you, if you can design your life in the way you want, you can better find your purpose. The magic of finding your purpose is a wonderful thing. You may have already found it. And if you so, I, I, I'm telling you, go and help somebody else find their purpose. If you found your purpose, you know the magic of it. You know, 2008, I had lost everything. My business was was done that we, we couldn't I couldn't find employment 50% of the mortgage companies just went out of business overnight and I had to piece myself back together in a very short period of time lost my house to foreclosure it's one of the worst feelings that you could go through to finally own a home and then to lose it because this is a home that I loved it had everything that I wanted and and then I and I was going to lose it and so I had to piece myself together and I had to completely change my line of work. I had a master's degree. I had education that I hadn't really used, but that wasn't going to save me in this time. I needed to figure out. I had, I had to, to find a an, an, an house for my family and I needed to figure out a way to, to make money now in some way, shape or form. So that's what I did. In my particular case, uh, you know, I just started selling stuff so I could survive, you know, go to the garage, get stuff from the garage and start selling it on, on eBay and anywhere that you can find on the internet. So I had a huge DVD collection and huge sci-fi fan and lots and lots of books. And so I started selling them, my comic books. I started selling my baseball cards. I started selling all my stuff. And then you start getting into the the way it works you get an understanding of the way that seller fulfillment works on the internet and and it was one in one particular day there was a book that i had sold on ebay and i couldn't find it the book was it had sold for six bucks i had listed it as a book i took a picture of and and, and and plopped it on there but i i couldn't find it and I didn't want to cancel this or refund it because I knew it would hurt my feedback rating at the time. So I, I didn't know what to do. And, and I found another book in better condition than the one I had been selling that somebody else was selling. But I only had to pay $4. So it was a simple transaction. I sent the book from, from the other seller and the other seller sent the book for me and I had $2. And I had $2 to my possession that I got from nothing, from thin air. It had not been there before. It just suddenly appeared. And I started to realize the magic and power of the internet because you can make money from nothing. You can make money from so many different things in so many different ways. And when you really get a grip and a hold of this incredible cosmic informational architecture that's available with the internet, 
then you can design your lifestyle the way that you want when you have a better understanding of some of the ways that it works. And it's not just the internet, but everything seems to be tied to it in some way, shape or form. So we're talking about lifestyle design. And I learned about this as I started to become self-employed and I went through the lessons of, okay, well, what's it? Well, I would, my greatest prayer was, Hey, I want to be able to find a way to work at home. And I don't want to go to go work at some other office. And I want to just, it, all I cared, it didn't really care what I was going to do. So more and more, I developed several businesses and then over time, my time got sucked into these businesses. And so the next thing you know, I'm working 19 hours a day, which gave me five hours to sleep, but I didn't have enough time. I knew that if I slept longer than five or six hours, then there wasn't going to be enough time for me to do all the work that I had to do for all my businesses. So I would set my alarm and wake up and I would go to bed at two and wake up at seven sometimes because sometimes you get to get all the work done for each of them by a certain period of time. So some days I would just not sleep, maybe catch a little nap here and there. And this went on for a very long period of time and it got worse and worse and it affected my relationships. It affected my family. This was not the lifestyle that I had dreamed of when I decided to be self-employed. And the thing is, I was also suffering from, from something you can call WWS, which is for working for work's sake. Sometimes when you have things, you end up working for work's sake. When you really look at it and you understand the principles of, of work itself, in many ways, the nine to five job doesn't make sense. And let me give you some examples. First of all, there's the 80-20 principle, which we'll talk about, and the Parkinson principle. And we'll talk about that a little bit more later. But the Parkinson principle is is you will always do enough work in the period of time that you're given to finish that job. So did you ever have that, that paper in college that you had to finish that was 20 pages and you did your best work the night before and you busted out 20 pages when you had no, when you had that deadline, that's how most of us work. Most of us work in these smaller time periods. So if you give somebody 10 months, they'll do 10 months to finish it. If you give somebody, Hey, you need to finish this book in six months, they'll finish the book in six months. So you can use this concept and you can understand it. And once, what ends up happening is you can change the way that you work. But the biggest discovery was the 80-20 principle. And understanding when you do a really tough breakdown of your life, usually about 20% of it is most effective and, then, and about 80% of it isn't. And if you can eliminate that 80% that is wasting your time and your energy and your emotion, you can give yourself more time in your life. You know, it was almost a magic spell, but I remember it was like in a deep meditation. It was just a very fervent favor because I had tried to imagine it and visualize it and look into it. And I just wanted to have more time. What could I do to have more time? Because we, we all want to be wealthy with money, but more and more. Time is more valuable than money. Time is everything. And imagine giving yourself more time. Lifestyle design was first talked about by Tim Ferriss in the four hour work week, a terrific book that you absolutely have to read. And he's the ultimate trend surfer, but taking our understandings we have explored in this podcast about parallel realities. And the ways in which it, our attention and thought can pull us literally into entirely different timelines and realities. You need to take this to an entirely different level and design your life. Like that old phrase, the juice is worth the squeeze. It's mind boggling to see how much I have learned since I've started my journey to design my life. And all I can say is you got to start somewhere, do something, act, take a risk, stop talking and just start doing something. That's the first step. Don't be forced into a situation where you have a month and you have a month to pay your bills and you have no other choice, but to start a business in a month. Don't do that. 
Start now. You know, when I considered at that point going back to my office job, the fear would surface and I would, I would lose my breath and get sick to my stomach. I had worked in the mortgage business and I didn't know what to do. I didn't, I wanted to go, I didn't want to go to a job that I didn't enjoy. Honestly, my friends were the only reason that I kept dragging myself to work every day. But I was comfortable there. And that is what everyone needs to look for. As they say, comfortable is not a good thing. It's a trap. My particular problem was that I didn't know what to do about it. I knew I wanted my own business. I had seen my father start his own business. And I I had seen the people I looked up to in my life had started their own businesses. But I had absolutely no clue on where to start. That's going to be the focus of the Laptop Revolution podcast. I have a lot of people that I coach. And what ends up happening is we figure out we need to help with their business. And, And to me, it's really a completely separate thing. But there is a journey that you can go on to start a business. And I love helping people start businesses. I don't have particular business that I want you to do. This is not a pyramid scheme or anything like that. I just find great joy when somebody, I've done it several times, when I, when, when I can help somebody start a business where they can work from home and they can choose their own hours and be their own boss in a comfortable business that they like. It's something that makes me happy. And it's something that I would love to be able to do for you. And if give that podcast a check and hopefully it's something that I can help you with. But if it doesn't have to just be about being self-employed, we have to take this to another level. But I'm just giving you my story and and how it happened. Uh, You know, even though I had a master's degree, two bachelor's degrees, obviously useless. I knew nothing about creating an actual business and I had to find a workaround that would work for me. And then the market crashed and half the mortgage companies just went out of business and I had no idea what I was going to do. What I didn't know at the time was what I was choosing my lifestyle would change everything. Finding something that I actually love doing. I knew I wanted to stretch my creative powers and figure some way to work at home. And I felt my, my life experiences might help someone. So the first thing you do is you start investigating how to start your business. And if it's, if you're designing a particular part of your life, find the information it's out there. Activate your reticular activating system. And seek out what you want and information will come to you. Talk to Uber drivers, Google, look, talk to the Better Business Bureau, watch YouTube videos. You will find a theme. A lot of the themes that I found in my particular case was the internet, using the internet to make money. In some way, shape or form, people were taking passions, products and talents to the internet and turning them into incredible careers, YouTube channels. So many incredible people that I've met that have started businesses and had incredible careers utilizing the internet. Once again, you don't have to use the internet. Um, But I'm giving this as an example and you can use the lessons that I learned. So all I knew is that when I would go to apply for a job, it would say go to this website. And when I wanted to know more about a product, it would say go to this website. And and when I wanted to go to a, do a search for a store or a product, it would go to Amazon or eBay. In this digital economy, there's so many options to choose from. Needless to say, most people don't even know it's a thing. And they much less capitalize on it. They go to their 9 to 5 job where they do as much work as they have to do and that's it. And it becomes crippling. Because you're in this and you have no other choice from what you do from Monday to Friday. And your freedom is not there. Wouldn't it be wonderful to be free to do what you want when you want? You don't need a formal degree or certification to be self-employed. And you don't need capital or money to start a business. 
And that's what people don't understand. If there's a particular thing that you're pursuing, if you want to be a doctor, then what I'm saying is focus on the 20% of the things that work for you. And, and we'll give some different techniques that we can use for that. But I'm saying if you really want to find your purpose and you don't know what your career mode or what it is you want to do, try to find a way where you can work at home to make money if you can or start a business and you can start a business and you can do it. Don't get me wrong. It can take some effort and willingness to push past roadblocks. But as I have witnessed from several mentors and from several students, the juice is worth the squeeze. How, let me ask you a question and I want you to ask yourself this. How will your priorities and decisions change if you could never retire? Now seriously, ask this question. What if it turns out you can never retire? The only way that you can continue your lifestyle in any way to even survive is that you have to have money coming in. The, these questions are no longer hypothetical. Millions of people have seen their savings portfolios fall 40% or more in value. I've seen it happen. And while it may be up now, it could go down at any time. They always do. So, can you redistribute retirement throughout life to make it more affordable? Can can people re relocate a few months a year to places like Costa Rica or Thailand to multiply the lifestyle output of their decreased savings where you can live like a king for $10 a day? Can you sell your service to companies in, for instance, in the UK, which earns a stronger currency and then you end up through the arbitrage of the foreign currency itself give you more money? The answer to all these is that you can do these things. The concept of lifestyle design as a replacement for multi-stage career planning is a sound idea. And it's as, as Tim Ferriss talks about, it's more flexible. It allows you to test different lifestyles without committing to 10 or 20 year retirement plans that can fail due to market fluctuations outside of your control. Or if they tell you that they were not going to give you the pension anymore, even though we promised it for the last 30 years. People are open to exploring alternatives and more forgiving of others who do the same. As many of the other options, the once safe options have failed. When everything and everyone is failing, what is the cost of a little experimentation outside of the norm? Most often nothing. You don't have to quit or you don't have to quit or hate your job. You don't have to be a risk taker. You don't have to be 20 years old. And you don't have to travel if you don't want to. But it can give you more time to design your lifestyle. We need to design a way where you have more time. It's just one option. The objective is to create freedom of time and place. And use both however you want. Do you need to be rich or win the lottery to live the life that you want? It, then the answer is no. You don't need to have a million dollars to live a millionaire lifestyle. I can tell you, my parents probably never made more than 80,000 per year combined. And I'm no Warren Buffett. And you don't need to be either. Do you need to go to Harvard or Yale? No. Most of my role models didn't go to the Harvards of the, of the world. And there's some dropouts. You know, top academic institutions are wonderful places and I went to college for for seven years and loved it but there's definitely benefits to not going to a, a, an Ivy League school and so I meet people that say I didn't go to that school I can't have this life it's just not true and the sad thing is graduates from these schools are funneled into 80 hour per week jobs that suck your soul out in 30 or 40 years and little did they know that, that wonderful degree that they got at, at the Ivy League pulled them into a zombie job where they weren't given the time and the freedom to find their purpose in life. Lifestyle designers are those who abandon the deferred life plan and create 
luxury lifestyles in the present using the currency of the new rich, of the lifestyle designer, time and mobility. This is an art and a science. That's what lifestyle design is. Finding a way to maximize your time and mobility. Because I believe this is something that will help you. Give you a greater choice in the reality that you want. You know, a lot of the literature about law of attraction and tra reality transurfing and consciousness research, it kind of gets separated from business. And it is important because it's defining who you are. And so that's why I'm trying to bring this just on this episode. We can talk about this further if you want to listen to the other one. But there is a recipe. Life doesn't have to be so hard. It really doesn't. Most people, myself included, have spent too much time convincing themselves that life has to be hard. It is one of my favorite things I try to tell myself. Life, this has got to be tough. This has got to be difficult. There's that part of me, that voice that I hear, that is resigned to the nine to five, that no matter what happens, eventually I'm going to have to go back to it. At least you'll have those relaxing Saturdays and Sundays. Maybe the occasional extra day. To, just to get through that extra month. The truth. At least the truth I live and will share in this podcast. Is quite different. From leveraging currency differences to outsourcing your life and disappearing. And hopefully I'll be able to show you how a small underground uses economic sleight of hand to do what most consider impossible. Whether your dream is to escape the rat race, real life fantasy travel, long term wondering, set, setting world records, or simply dramatic career change, you can do it. I believe all of the tools are available now for all of us if we look into some of these concepts to make it reality in the here and now instead of making it a reality in retirement there is a way to get the rewards for a life of hard work without waiting until the end and without all the hard work how well it begins with a simple distinction that most people miss one that I missed so many years ago when I started to work at different companies when I started to decide what I wanted to do with my life and this is the truth that I will tell you this concept once you understand it will allow you to manifest more than you realize I meet a lot of people and they want to manifest money and they usually have a specific dollar amount that they try to manifest they want to find a reality or something and they want a million dollars or a billion dollars thing is your heart doesn't know what that is and your heart is part of this process in reality people don't want to be millionaires they want to experience what they believe only millionaires can buy luxurious Hawaiian resorts butlers exotic travel enter your mind when you think about these things sitting out in your private pool in a hammock listening to the waves rhythmically lapping against the deck of the beach house that you live in right you can have that you don't need to be a millionaire you can have that and that's the realization you can have all the things you think you can't have you can have those things and million dollars in the bank is not is not the fantasy the fantasy is the lifestyle of complete freedom that it allows. The question is, how can we achieve the millionaire lifestyle? How can we manifest this lifestyle of complete freedom without first having a million dollars? It's a way for you to manifest your life without having the money to manifest it. You meet a lot of People and everyone seems to want to build that large successful company then sell out the company and live the good life 
And fair enough, that's, that's definitely something that has worked. And if anybody can luck into that, that's great. The question no one really seems to be asking is why do it all in the first place? What is the pot of gold that justifies spending the best years of your life hoping for happiness in the last years of your life? I watched my father, an incredible man, work very hard for his entire life. For 45 years. And then once he stopped working, he didn't know what to do. And it was his time of retirement. He could spend his retirement. But I just sometimes sadden when I look at my dad's life. And he loved to go fishing and loved to do things that he really could have would have done more of. But he had that job that he had to do. And it's the reality of the situation of the economy that we, he was in. I'm saying that is now becoming possible with the internet and with other ways that business is is evolving and growing that we can we can change this when we look at what's going coming in the horizon we see artificial intelligence taking over many different jobs out there you see automation taking over factories you see politicians talking about giving a thousand dollars a month because of this massive change that we are experiencing in our economy. But there's one thing that they will never be able to take away from you. And that's your creativity. And that's your mindset. If you can own your own business, they cannot take it away from you. And it might change and it might evolve and you will learn lessons and you might fail at one. But I'm going to try to give some reasonable ways to look at it. You don't need to just start one business and don't just start one business. Start maybe have a couple of different ideas that you want and you don't need to be creative and invent something you can usually see what's already making money and remember look at the infrastructure behind whatever it is that's making money for instance during the gold rush remember the people that sold the pickaxes are the ones that made the money usually there's an infrastructure that starts to evolve around some particular market so if you see for instance uh different like bitcoin becomes popular there's an infrastructure behind bitcoin find out about that if you look at food delivery services you don't need to create your own food delivery service the actual delivery service itself they need vans and delivery you can find a way to become a part of that business there's so many ways that you can find businesses there's so many different things that you can do and you don't need to invest a lot of money my highest performing business i invested zero dollars in to start I'm just telling you that that I talk to people all the time and they will simply not even try. They will not even think with their minds that they can start a business because in their minds they've already told themselves that they can't. That it's too much money, it's too complicated, that's not what they were meant to do. If you want to design your lifestyle, it's going to be a lot easier to do it with freedom. That freedom is something that you can get by exploring this. And while other spiritual gurus and teachers and and consciousness explorers can talk about wealth and prosperity mindsets and abundance, how do we get that abundance? What are the things that we need to do to do that, to that abundance? Well, the number one thing is to bring in as much information as possible. And also, don't lock yourself into one particular timeline. If you want to have the freedom to travel the world and explore different various timelines to be able to transurf into different timelines you need the freedom to do that by creating businesses that are passive as Vadim Zeeland says find the easiest path on your wave of fortune and this is a path that is easy and needs to be explored to its fullest I'm going to assume that the majority of people out there listening to this podcast have suffered from time famine that creeping dread or something even worse a tolerable and comfortable existence doing something they're unfulfilled by the last is the most common and most insidious I have seen it in my family I have seen it with my friends I have seen it throughout my life it's not about saving You don't need to eliminate all of your red wine if that's what you want to do. 
We're not saving millions of year, millions of dollars 50 years from now. Drink the glass of wine if that's what you want to do. You can have both now. Enjoyment today and you can have the joy of it. The goal is fun and profit. This is not about going out and finding your dream job. Most people somewhere between what is there on the earth? Like 7 billion of us? The perfect job is the, is the one that takes the least amount of time. Why does our lives have to be defined around that? Imagine what would you do if you had all the money that you wanted? What would you do then? And if you had all your money, what, how would you design your lifestyle? What would you eat for breakfast? When would you eat it? How would you eat it? What would you do during the day? Create the lifestyle, the daily lifestyle that you want. The vast majority of people will never find a job that can be, that can be an unending source of fulfillment. And it would be ridiculous to say, oh, it's, your purpose is all about finding that job that gives you your fulfillment. That is not the goal. To free time and automate the income will allow you to find something else. You know, there's a very good story in the book, Prosperity Mindset, where the, the uh, teacher is talking to somebody that uh, decides to finally pay off everything they had in their business and they had enough to go home. And so they paid off all of their debts and went home and decided that they could retire in that moment. And once they had been retired, they had no obligations of anything they had to do. They had the ability to pay off all, their, all of their debts but they continued working because that's what they had been used to. So when they finally decided, okay, I'm going to pay all these debts off and just see what it's like if I don't have to work. In that period of time, in that month where they didn't have to work, they found their true meaning. They found legal issues that they wanted. To, he was a lawyer at a law firm and they found legal issues that, that really that he felt he cared about. And so one thing that happens once you get this free time from your income being automated, you will find more time to find your meaning and purpose to, and you will be able to better create your reality. Eliminate those things that take the most time, but produce the least. That's the thing. 80% of the stuff that you have with your job or business right now, even whatever it is, is useless. And many times we're in corporate jobs, they make us do these things. 20% are the key things that are defining it. It's almost a universal truth. It can be found on, on many levels, on many levels, even in nature. You want to be able to find some way of um, putting cash flow on autopilot, using geographic arbitrage or outsourcing. Those are the things that you can do. You can find virtual assistants in the Philippines and in India. The ones that I have are my best employees. They can help you do all kinds of things. But you have to find a way to overcome the WWS, the working for work's sake, and do the minimum necessary for maximum effect. Distribute recovery periods and find many retirements and adventures throughout life. Do all the things that you want to do and be all the things you want to be. It's not about the tools and gadgets and things that you're accumulating. If it includes that, that's fine. But that's not a means to an end or bonuses. And that's not the focus. The thing you get is not the focus. It is the experience. To be neither the boss nor the employee, but the owner. To own the trains and have someone else ensure they run on time. To make a ton of money with specific reasons and defined dreams to chase. Timelines and steps included. What are the things that you're working for? Imagine a little bit more quality. To find more quality and less clutter. To have huge financial reserves but recognize that most material wants are justifications for spending time on the things that don't really matter including buying things and preparing to buy things. You spend two weeks negotiating your new infinity with the dealership and then you just get $10,000 off. Well, that's great. Does your life have a purpose? 
as Tim Ferriss says? Are you contributing anything useful to this world? Or just shuffling papers, banging on a keyboard, and coming home to a drunken existence on the weekends? Think big. But to think big, we have to find a way to make the money to do it. Ensure that payday comes every day, cash flow first, big payday second. Freedom from doing that which you dislike. Lifestyle designers, to have freedom from doing that which you dislike, but also the freedom to resolve to pursue your dreams without reverting back to work for work's sake. After years of repetitive work, you will often need to dig hard to find your passions. And you're probably out there. You've done so much of the same thing. It's hard to even think about having a passion. You've let it go. There's a part of you that says, I don't need to do that. I'm past that age. I don't need to worry about it. I don't need to have a dream anymore. That's not true. Redefine your dreams. Revive your hobbies that you let atrophy that you gave up on, the things that gave you joy. Eliminate the bad. But remember when you do that, you leave a vacuum. Pursue and experience the best in the world. There's always the blind quest for cash. And we feel it. It's pushing us. It defines everything. It is the most important thing. There's this sense that you, you've got to do everything you can. There's this pressure. And it defines a lot of people's meditations. But the, the secret that I really tell is it, that a, a lot of people don't know is that it costs less than rent in the U.S. If you can free your time and location, your money automatically worth three to times as much. There has nothing to do with currency rates. Being financially rich and having the ability to live like a millionaire are fundamentally two very different things. You can live in another country with the money that you have and you can live like a millionaire. Money is multiplied in practical value depending on the number of W's you control in your life. And the W's are what you do, when you do it, where you do it, and with whom you do it. And say it as a mantra, I am so happy and grateful that I'm free to do what I want, when I want, where I want, and how I want. Say that over and over. Imagine that feeling of being able to do what you want, when you want, where you want, and how you want, with whom you want. Make that your criterion. So using this criterion, imagine somebody that can that has those and compare that to somebody that, that works 80 hours a week at an inve- at like an investment banker. The person that only that only makes twenty thousand dollars a month is still richer. Is he if he's able to do what he wants, when he wants, where he wants, and how he wants? The ability to choose is a real power, and I'd really love to find a way to create and see those options with the least effort and cost. And it's paradoxical, but you can make more money, a lot more. And, and, I, and there's examples. I'm not just talking about one person in particular. There is literally hundreds of thousands of people right now that are sitting at home that have figured out this particular trick of designing their lifestyle, of finding forms of income in which they, that gives them the freedom that they want. That is the real power. And, and then I, I would love to, to, to share my stories and to hear your stories, to create a forum where people can talk about ways to achieve this freedom because we want to manifest this. How are we going to manifest this for all of us? Now, I believe we can all have this freedom. Who are the lifestyle designers, the employees who are rearrange his schedule and negotiates a remote work agreement to achieve 90% of the results in one tenth of the time? There are stories of all kinds of people that have negotiated with their boss to get a remote working agreement. They figure out a way to do the job that they have to do in a minimal amount of time. And that's an example where you don't have to quit your 9-to-5 job. 
And I recommend reading the four hour workbook. There are specific scripts that you can talk to your boss, ways of going about it, ways of bringing up working at home. And it's powerful and it works. If you're a writer and you want to work at home, but you have a day job, there's ways if you can find a way to talk to your boss, you can get and work in a remote environment. So the business owner is the lifestyle designer who, who eliminates the least profitable customers and projects and outsources and operations entirely and travels the world. So the business owner that has two clients that are making him 10,000 and the rest of them are making him 50,000. And he eliminates the two that are give, that have the 10,000 because they complain all the time and they bitch and moan and they take hours and hours of his time. You can eliminate customers and things in your work environment that are taking away your time without guilt. By doing so, it can free up more time for you to make more money doing other things. Imagine being able to establish an online video rental service that delivers $5,000 per month in income for a small niche of Blu-ray aficionados. You could do that for two hours a week. You need to learn the new lexicon and recalibrate direction using a compass for an unusual world for inverting responsibility to jettisoning the entire concept of success. We need to change the rules. Number one, retirement is a worst case scenario insurance. Treat it like that. Retirement planning is like life insurance. It should be viewed as nothing more than a hedge against the absolute worst case scenario becoming physically incapable of working and needing a reservoir of capital to survive. Retirement as a goal or final redemption is flawed. It's, pre it's predicated on the assumption that you dislike what you're doing during the phys most physically capable years of your life. It's just not true. Nothing can justify that sacrifice. Most people will never be able to retire and maintain even a hot dog for dinner standard of living right now. Even one million is chump change in a world where traditional retirement could span 30 years and inflation lowers your purchasing power two to 4% each year. The math doesn't work. The golden years become lower middle class life revisited. That's a bittersweet ending. If the math does work, it means that you're too, that you are one ambitious, hardworking machine. And if that's the case, guess what? One week into retirement, you will not know what to do with yourself. You're probably going to look for another job. And that defeats all that time that you spent building up your retirement accounts. Max out your 401ks and IRAs for, for tax purposes, but don't make the mistake of retirement for your goal. Interest and energy are cyclical. So if I've offered you 10 billion dollars to work 24 hours a day for 15 years and then retire would you do it well you probably would be dead of course you wouldn't you couldn't do it 24 hours a day for 15 years it is unsustainable you simply couldn't do it just as what most define as a career doing the same thing for eight plus hours per day until you break down or have enough cash to permanently stop that's the world that we're living in let's create a new reality now acknowledging that we have the ability to create our reality then let's change this and let's find a greater freedom and abundance in the world by taking and controlling and designing our lifestyle i see my friends looking like wilbur brimley and barbara walters it's horrendous premature aging triple bypasses frappuccinos impossible workloads I know because I was there at the point that I realized I needed to design my life and I had started my business and I've wow I got this business that's working but guess what happened I was working like I said 19 hours a day and I broke down and didn't know what to do and when you start to realize there are people out there that can help you with your business that is a big, big learning lesson in a lot of businesses. Don't assume that you have to do all the work. There's always a way for you to find people that can work for you, that can help you. And it's, I've met people that have started businesses that are very afraid to bring on other people to work for them. 
And I'm telling you, it's worth it. Give it a shot. Give it a try. Don't be afraid to have a mini retirement here and there. It'll help you and it'll give you enjoyment for that, that you need by working only when your most effective life is both more productive and more enjoyable. It's the perfect example of having your cake and eating it too. Aim for one month overseas or relocation or high intensity learning, learning of something like getting your black belt in particular projects. Less is not laziness. Doing less meaningless work so that you can focus on things of greater personal importance is not laziness. This is hard for a lot of really high achievers to accept because our culture tends to reward personal sacrifice instead of personal productivity. Few people choose to measure the results of their actions and thus measure their contributions in time. More time equals more self-worth and more reinforcement from the above and around them. So be a lifestyle designer. Despite few hours in the office, produce more meaningful results than the next dozen non-lifestyle designers combined. Let's define laziness differently. To endure a non-ideal existence, to let circumstance or others decide life for you, or to amass a fortune while passing through life like a spectator from an office window. The size of your bank account doesn't change this, nor does the number of hours you log in handling unimportant emails or minutia that is unimportant. Focus on being productive instead of busy. The timing is never right. It's never going to be right for you. The universe will move however you want. But if you're sitting and waiting for that time to be right for you, you're, it's never going to be perfect. Now, the universe and reality doesn't, is not conspiring against you. But it's not going to go out of its way to line up all the pins either. Follow the sectors of the alternative space. Get access to it, and, and your heart will tell you the right ways to go. Someday is a disease that will take your dreams to the grave with you. Okay? And it's also good to ask for forgiveness, not permission. If it isn't going to devastate those around you, try it. If you miss a day at work for something else, ask for forgiveness, not permission people, whether parents, partners, or bosses, deny things on an emotional basis that they can learn to accept after the fact. If the potential damage is moderate or in any way reversible, don't give people the chance to say no. Most people are fast to stop you before you get started, but hesitant to get in the way of you or moving in. Get good at being a troublemaker and saying sorry when you really screw up. And I'm saying that for people that are not willing to go after their dreams or do things that they truly love. Emphasize your strengths. Don't fix your weaknesses. Most people are good at a hand, handful of things and utterly miserable at most. The choice is between multiplication of results using strengths or incremental improvement fixing weaknesses that will at best become mediocre. Focus on better use of your best weapons instead of constant repair. Things in excess become their opposite. It is possible to have too much of a good thing. In excess, most endeavors and possessions take on the characteristics of the opposite. Thus, pacifists become militant. Freedom fighters become tyrants. Blessings become curses. Help becomes hindrance. More becomes less. For too much, too many, and too often of what you want becomes what you don't want. This is true of all your possessions and even time. And it'll probably be easier to design your lifestyle if you have the ability to move and decide what you want to do with your life than to have a bunch of stuff. So you don't need to create an excess of uh, you don't need to create an excess of stuff the positive use of free time doing what you want as opposed to what you feel obligated to do is the key money alone is not the solution there's much to be said for the power of money it, it is it does make life better it is not a bad thing it is a wonderful thing if I only had money is the easiest way to postpone 
the most intense self-examination and decision-making necessary to create a life of enjoyment. That is what I hear when I talk to somebody with some truly powerful gifts. And they say, if only I had money, then I could go do that thing. It's not true. Stop saying that. By using money as the scapegoat and work as our all-consuming routine, we are able to conveniently disallow ourselves the time to do otherwise. Stop using money as your excuse. Relative income is more important than absolute income. That's the... That's the key in understanding how to treat money. A dollar is a dollar is a dollar. The new rich don't think so. Fifth grade math problem. Two hardworking people are headed toward each other. The first one is moving at 80 hours per week. And the, and the second one is moving at 10 hours per week. They both make $50,000 a year. Who will be wealthier and richer when they pass the middle of the night? It would be B. It would be the second person. And this is absolute and relative income. Your income is relative to the time you're putting into it. So understand, it's not too late for you to design your lifestyle, to think about these things, to put this into your meditations, to do or not to do, to try or not to try. Most people will vote no, whether they consider themselves brave or not. Uncertainty and the prospect of failure can be very scary noises in the shadows. Most people will choose unhappiness over uncertainty. And I did the same thing. For years, I set goals and made resolutions to change direction and nothing came of it because I was afraid. I was as insecure and scared as the rest of the world. The simple solution came accidentally when I sold that item and I couldn't find it. And then I could replicate the similar process and I could find items to sell that I didn't have that somebody else could ship for me. That was the first of mine. Then it was helping people to advertise, to advertise on Facebook. Then it was to help people create websites and market. There's always something that you can do and then you can maximize this of course there were times when I was in the mortgage business when I was making 30,000 and 40,000 a month and I wasn't happy I was completely miserable worse than ever I had no time I was working in the office for 18 hours working myself to death what was wrong with me I had all this money The truth was nothing was wrong with me. I just had reached my limit. I'd reached the limit of my business model at the time. It wasn't the driver, it was the vehicle. Critical mistakes. And that was what happened. It became frustrating later on when I was able to get my own business. And and I did enjoy it, but didn't enjoy the amount of time that I had put onto it. And then I was working 19 hours a day. And the problem was I couldn't sell the the business that I had created. I I couldn't sell it. So I had to continue doing it. But I was stuck working the 19 hours. What was I going to do? I couldn't just abandon it. But to find ways to take the most effective, the things that were taking most of your time and minimize that was truly powerful and freeing. How do I free myself from this Frankenstein while making it self-sustaining? How do I pride myself from the tentacles of workaholism and the fear that it would fall to pieces without my long 19-hour days? How could I escape this prison that I had made for myself? How do I... It felt prudent for me to find a way out, and I couldn't. So I just, just was in shame and anger and embarrassment, and I tried to numb myself from it. One day, in my bliss of envisioning how bad my future suffering would be. Don't be happy. Be worry. Why don't I decide exactly what my night or what would be? And so I sat down in this time and I said, what would be the worst case scenario? My business would fail. What would be the worst case scenario? And I'm asking you, what would be your worst case scenario? Guess what? It's not going to be as bad as you think. You can overcome it. 
You can take chances, and a lot of times we're so afraid of the worst case scenario. Analyze what, what other options that you might have. Oftentimes your worst case scenario never happens. And, and oftentimes what you think is your worst case scenario isn't so bad. You gotta conquer your fear. You gotta define the fear and find a way to overcome it so that it won't stop you. So I'm just telling you that you can do this, that you have the ability to do this. I'm gonna give you an, a, um, a great exercise and that is to dreamline, to set some goals that are unrealistic and focus on activities that can fill the vacuum. What would you do if there were no, no way that you could fail? If you were 10 times smarter than the rest of the world, create two different timelines, six months and 12, and list up to five things you dream of having, including, but not limited to material wants, house, car, clothing, etc. Being, being a, a, a great writer or fluent in Japanese and doing. So visiting Hawaii or visiting Thailand or going to Norway or swimming with the dolphins. So three things, six months and 12 months, two timelines, five things you dream of having, doing, and being. Now that can be difficult. Most people have trouble coming up with defined dreams they're being held from that they can't have. They don't like to think in those terms. This is particularly true with the doing category. In that case, what would you do day to day if you had a hundred million in the bank? Ask yourself that. What would you make you most excited to wake up in the morning to another day? Think about it. Fill in the five doing spots with, with one place to visit, one thing to do before you die, one thing to do daily, one thing to weekly, one thing you always wanted to learn. A lot of people have a hard time filling these out. What does being entail? Convert its being into a doing, to making actionable, identify an action that would characterize this state of being or a task that would mean you had achieved it. People find it easier to brainstorm being first, but this column is just temporary holding spot for doing actions. What are your, what are the four dreams that would change it all? Using the six month timeline star or otherwise highlight the four most exciting and or important dreams from all the columns. Repeat the process with the 12 month timeline. And then five, determine the cost of these dreams and calculate your targeted monthly income for both timelines. If financeable, what is the cost per month for each of the four dreams? Rent, mortgage, payment, plan, installments. Do not cower behind these numbers. Just put the numbers down. If you feel any kind of fear or ridiculous around the numbers, take that away. Make an intention that you take that away. Start thinking of income and expense in terms of monthly cash flow, dollars in and dollars out instead of grand totals. It makes it a little easier. Now, things often cost much less than expected. For instance, a Lamborghini Gallardo Spider can be purchased at $2,897 a month. <laughs> if you want to spend that much a month, then you can be driving around in one. So I looked up a, a Porsche that I always loved with a thousand miles on it, and, and I could find it for $136,000 or $2,003 per month, if my, my payment would be. You can find a round trip ticket from Los Angeles to Tokyo to Singapore to Bangkok to Delhi to London to Frankfurt, all for $1,300. The things that are available that you can purchase are sometimes a lot less than you think. Then, total each of the columns, A, B, and C, counting only the four selected dreams. Some of these column totals would be zero, which is fine. Next, add your total monthly expenses. At, multiply it times 1.3 to give yourself a buffer of 30% for safety or savings. The grand total is your total monthly income and the target is to keep in mind for the rest of your time in defining your lifestyle. It's a process that I learned in the 4-Hour work, work Week and it works. Define your daily income, your monthly income. What is it? Get Take the monthly income and break it down daily. Even break it down hourly. Break it down by the minute. 
And the shorter you make it, then you can start to find things that can allow you to do the things that you want to do. Give yourself the mobility that you need. Overcome your fears. Define your nightmare. The worst thing that could happen. What? Figure out what, what those things are. When you go through this process, you become aware they're not as bad as you think. What steps would you take to repair the damage? Chances are, the things that you could do are easier than you can imagine. What are the outcomes or benefits, both temporary and permanent, of more profitable scenarios? Once you overcome your nightmare, all of your other possibilities start to open up to me, up to you and help you to define your lifestyle, to create it in the way that you want to. If you were fired from your job today, what would you do to get things under financial control? Imagine this scenario and run through some of the stuff we've talked about. In many cases, it would probably be a lot better than you think. I'm telling you, since the late 90s, a revolution has taken place in the way people do business. Thanks to the internet, new web technologies such as email, search engines, affiliate programs, voiceover protocols, online auctions, video streaming, webinars, social media. You can now do business all over the world without ever leaving your house. Millions of people are now making full-time living working from home. If somebody created a billion dollar infrastructure that you could leverage for free to connect with one billion or people around the world, wouldn't you want to take the advantage of this once in a lifetime opportunity? Now there is a revolution gathering and it's not just the reality revolution. It's the revolution of entrepreneurs worldwide. One trillion dollars are being spent online. One in every four advertising dollars now being spent is online. Most people spend 40 minutes a day on social media. And yet most people are completely unaware of the incredible opportunities this has created for them. And in this podcast, and this related blog, you'll definitely find some success stories of people that have been able to work this out in their lives. You can probably find it on the Laptop Revolution podcast. We're not going to discuss it as much on this podcast. But my intention is to inspire you with this podcast to take advantage of these opportunities, to define your life, to find passive income opportunities, to find ways to make money so that you can live the lifestyle that you want, to think about and plan your entire day, entire month, entire year, to truly manifest all of the things that you want in your life. And that is why I do believe if you can find a way to find income in other ways, if you're not happy with your job, if you're happy with your job, there's lots of things that you can use, the principles that we've talked about on this podcast. But for people that are looking for their purpose, self-employment can do it and finding ways to do that are powerful. I just wanted to thank you for spending this time with me about lifestyle design. I could talk about this forever and I will be on the other podcast, but you can find your purpose and you can find a way of living the life that you want. You can manifest it a lot easier than you realize. A lot of times we're creating very complicated manifestations that we want to envision. We have goals that are too complicated and we don't realize that we can have a lot of the things that we want right now. And you can do that. So thank you for spending this time examining the ways that we can find a way to design our lifestyles. If you'd like more of the website, you can find all of the information about all of our podcasts with all transcripts included at therealityrevolution.com. If you need coaching, go to advancedsuccessinstitute.com. If you need to reach me, you can email me at brian at advancedsuccessinstitute.com. It's a real pleasure to have this chance to talk with you, and I hope that you are designing the perfect lifestyle for yourself. Thank you for joining the Reality Revolution.